Good morning, Year Two. Are you ready for our last reading lesson of the week? Let's start. For session two today, our question is, how do brilliant readers answer questions on the text and make inferences? I know you're going to be experts at this today. We're going to begin by reading some common exception words from the text. We'll recap the text, the bear and the piano. And then we will answer questions by finding the answer in the text. So get your fingers ready to point to the screen. We will end today by answering more questions and then comparing it to another story. Let's check you've got everything you need today. Have you got a pencil? Yes. Have you got some paper? And most importantly, everybody, have you got your brain? I'm sure you've given it some lovely breakfast this morning, or maybe even a snack by now to keep it going. So today we're going to start by reading some common exception words. These are all found in our story today. We've got the word friends. Can you spot it? Well done. I'm going to read them round in a circle and then do the middle ones. Something. Bought. When. Every. Father. Would. Beautiful. After. I'm going to challenge you now. Can you find when? Well done. Can you find father? Well read, it's at the bottom. Can you find friends? Brilliant, it's above, beautiful. Now, I would like you to put me on pause and see if you can read all of the words. If someone's at home with you, they might even like to time you to see how fast you can read them all. Put me on pause now to read the common exception words. Today's lesson is all about answering questions on the text, the bear and the piano. Let's remind ourselves of the title. Can you put your finger gently on the screen or point to it? Yes, it's in the middle, the bear and the piano. We always know that the title is normally very clear for us to see because the author wants us to identify it very quickly. Can you spot the author? Well done, it's at the bottom of the front cover, David Litchfield. Last time we read this lovely story about the bear who found a piano. He learned to play it. And then some people came and they suggested that he could go to the city. The bear had a very tough choice and we made predictions um, if he was going to even go or not. As we read on, we learned that the bear did in fact go to the city and it looked like he had a fantastic time. But there was a problem. He missed his friends and wanted to go home. And we saw that lovely page of him rowing on his boat all the way back to the forest. But when he got there, there was no one there in the clearing. Luckily, he spotted a bear that led him to his old piano and all of his friends. And he played for the most important audience of all, his friends. We're going to have different challenges today. Our one chilly challenge is going to be discussing the answers to questions with me. And we're going to work through those questions now. At the end of those questions, I will leave up some more for you to answer in your book on your own. That's our two chilly challenge. Our free chilly challenge will be comparing this story to another story called The Singing Mermaid. You may remember this from our last lockdown in year one. Let's get started on the questions today. Now, as we said at the start of the lesson, we are going to be identifying the answer in the text. So I'm going to read the question, read the text, read the question again to make sure I understand it, and then look for the answer. The question says, why does the bear touch the piano shyly with his paw? Now, 
I'm thinking in my head the word shy. That's when you're a little bit hesitant, a little bit worried about things. Hmm. That gives me an idea already. Let's read the text so we can see if we can find the word shyly to help us. One day in the forest, a young bear cub found something he'd never seen before. Now that didn't say shyly, did it? But the fact he'd never seen this piano before could make him a bit worried, could make him shy. So I'm going to keep that inside my head for my answer. What could this strange thing be, he thought. Shyly, he touched it with his stubby paw. Blonk, the strange thing made an awful sound. Let's read the question again. Why does the bear touch the piano shyly with his paw? Put me on pause now and think about the answer. When you have an answer, press play and we'll chat about what you've put. Have you got an answer ready? Well done, everybody. Your answer could be similar to mine. Now we noticed that he had never seen this thing before. He didn't know what it was. I think that he touched the piano shyly with his paw because he had never seen it before and he didn't know what it was. He, we can see from the text that he thought it was a strange thing. Can you put your finger on where it says strange thing? Well done. And that means that could have made him worry. So I would imagine that in your answer, you will have all of those kind of things. Well done if you did. Let's look at our next question. Remember our routine of answering these retrieval questions is read the question, read the text, read the question again, put your finger on where you think the answer could be. What did the bear dream of? Oh, I'm looking at the important word dream in that question. That might help me find the answer. The sounds that came from the strange thing were beautiful and the bear had grown big and strong and grisly. Did that give us the answer? When the bear played, he felt so happy. The sound took him away from the forest and he dreamed of strange and wonderful lands. Let's read the question again. What did the bear dream of? Now, did you hear the word dream or dream? Put your finger on it now. This is where we'll find the answer. What did the bear dream of? It tells us he dreamed of strange and wonderful lands. Well done if you spotted that. Put me on pause and say the answer in a sentence. Well done, everyone. Yeah, I bet you could have just used the sentence at the bottom. What did the bear dream of? He dreamed of strange and wonderful land. Well done, you. Next question. I'm going to see if you can do this one on your own. Read the question. Read the text, read the question again, and find the answer. Put me on pause now. Are you ready to look at the answer? So I'm going to read the question. Why did he want to leave? He longed to explore the world beyond the woods. That means he really wants to go. To hear more wonderful music and to play bigger and better than before. I can see the answers there. Why did he want to leave? To hear more wonderful music, to explore the world, and to play bigger and better than before. Were they the answers that you got? Well done if they were. Let's have a look at our next question. It's over to you again. Read the question, read the text, read the question again, and point to the answer. Can you put your answer in a sentence? Put me on pause now. How did you get on everybody? Let's read the question. How do you know that the audience thought the bear was great at playing with the piano? Uh, sorry, great at playing the piano. Let's read the text. 
Every night he performed with such passion and grace to wild applause and standing ovations and huge admiration. Now I can see that people in the illustration are super happy. They've got big smiles. They're all stood up clapping. So we know they really enjoyed his playing because they did wild applause, not just a little clap, they went crazy. So wild applause should be in your answer. Standing ovation, so they're standing up clapping, asking for more, more, more. And they did huge admiration. So lots of reasons there why, why people thought he was great at playing the piano. Next question. Remember, same routine. Read the question, read the text, read the question again. Look for the answer from what you've read. You might even like to put your finger on it again. Put me on pause now. How did you go? Did you put me on pause? <laughs> Our question was, why did he want to go home? Let's read the text. The city was everything he had hoped it would be. But deep down, something tugged at the bear's heart. I wonder what it could be. This is going to be our answer. He had fame and awards and all the music in the world, but he missed the forest. Bingo. He, missed, he wanted to go home because he missed the forest. And he missed his old friends. And he missed his home. We had three reasons there why the bear wanted to go home. Did you get them all? Well done if you did. If you didn't, can you spot them in the text now? That was the end of our Chili 1 challenge. We're going to move on to Chili 2. So if I move myself, there you go, you can see the two chilies now. Um, on the screen, you'll see four questions. I would like you to put me on pause in a minute, and I'd like you to write the answer to these questions in your book. So we have, why do you think the thing made an awful sound when the bear touched it. Why are the sounds now beautiful rather than awful? What tugged at the bear's heartstrings making him want to go home? And why are the bears the most important audience of all? If you need to see um, any of the pages, you can go back to our last video and pause them on the screen or in this video too. So put me on pause now and write in your book the answers to these questions. Last challenge then everybody. We are going to be looking at comparing the text for our free chili challenge. Remember you don't have to do all of these challenges, you're just picking a one, two or a few, whatever is best for you. So my final challenge for you today is to watch or read The Singing Mermaid. I put a link for YouTube on the screen, but if you just type in The Singing Mermaid, Julia Donaldson into YouTube, it should come up and there's lots of lovely people reading it. After you've listened or read this story, I would like you to compare the choices that the characters make. These are two characters that leave their home to follow their dream. I want you to think about if the choices they made are similar or different. I would like you to think about the question, what causes the main character to make their decision? Why do they leave? And what effect does the decision have? Does it have a good effect on their lives or a bad effect? Compare the two texts in your book. Now you could do this any way you like. It could be in a table like we've done before. It could be in sentences. Or you could do two drawings and label them to show how some things are similar and some things are different. It's totally up to you. I can't wait to see what you get up to. Have fun, everybody. Last of all, it just leaves me to say a huge well done from myself and all the year two teachers and TAs. We are so proud of everything you are doing at home. Keep it up, everybody. We miss you, but hope you have an excellent weekend. We'll speak to you soon. Bye.